dirt roads to rock crawling, tuba chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to Wheeling Wine and Whiskey, episode 109. In the remote studio, Studio L. That's Lance. Hashtag Lance Life, Chris. Hell yeah. How you doing? I'm great. So uh, we're up here in uh, our adopted trail. Yes. Horse Gulch Camp. I love this place. We're in the lower heights. Uh, Rodney uh, Latte, J.O. Latte machine is in the... Uh, the uh, upper heights of uh, camp here. I know. I went to visit him earlier, and I got turned back. There's a gate. I, like, flashed my gold card, everything. Couldn't get in. No, it's bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. But uh, that's all right. We're down here recording, and, um, man, what a great uh, trip up here yesterday. Hell, yeah. We uh, stopped by uh, Hinter House. Yes, the we did. Hinterheasy, as some people call it in That's the Bay a Area. Distillery. <laughs> and what do they do at distilleries? So, distillery. So, he um, distills spirits. Yes, he makes does. Some wonderful spirits. So, Nate, we got to sit down with Nate, owner, proprietor of uh, Hinter House in right. Arnold, California. Yes. So, uh, just uh, right there by Big Trees. Yeah. So some people have heard of that. So like people that aren't familiar with our state of California. Uh, so that's where they have the uh, the frog jumping contest, too. That's right. Yeah, Murphy's. That's the great just Calaveras down there. County frog jumping yeah, exactly. contest. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's a, big, it's a big deal. Because, you know, what's what's more fun than watching frogs jump? Uh, drinking wine and distilled spirits. And watching frogs jump. And watching frogs jump. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but so... Um, we met up with Nate yesterday, and it was freaking great. Um, he just started this this operation, him and his wife, uh, back in November. That's right, twenty. I mean, so kind of you COVID. Know, COVID it was definitely COVID, and you know, hopefully at the end of COVID. Um, but it was just he he put a lot of lot of out on the table. He did. He the did. chance. And uh, I commend him for that because I, I tried to put myself on, in his shoes when we were talking about this. And I'm like, I, that's not a good bet. You know, just difficult times. And uh, a, I mean, a, alcohol sells, but. Alcohol sells, but also difficult times, but in a tourist community. And he didn't get to, uh, you know, uh, share his wares, uh, do tasting. Right. And buy so, it. You got to buy it. So great packaging, scene. great label. I mean, it, it was super sexy. And so people were buying it on good faith and definitely delivered. Uh, hell yeah. But, um, man, what a what a crazy time to start. And he's 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 off to a great start. Absolutely. Him and his wife. And uh, I wish Bonnie, them the best. Right? Of, yeah. Wish, wish them the best of luck. And then their son was there. Yeah. Um, Working and uh, man, what a great operation! And so we sat down with him and yep. just just he walked us through the whole operation and uh, got to talk about and taste. Uh, his vodka is awesome. Oh. It's all wine based. It's exactly wine based. And which I is did not know. I got educated uh, because I thought you know you take wine, which may or may not we've done before with a local distillery, <laughs> and made brandy. Right. From wine. I knew that. I knew you could take wine and turn it into brandy. I did not know you could turn it into vodka. I did not know you could turn it into whiskey. Well, it's about temperatures, so it's just, right? It is. Just, uh, yeah. 195 degrees for the uh, vodka. 195 proof. Well, yeah. And and just incredible. Um, so, and he has a hybrid still he's going to talk about that's right. super cool. Right. Um, they got a great... Uh, tasting room area, you know, area where you can chill, pull up to the bar, um, some great swag. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just super cool to see because, uh, and I mentioned this in the podcast, that the whole Arnold area going up to Bear Valley has been depressed over the years. Oh, well, yeah, cyclical. Yeah, and um, it, it's great to see some new blood in there and breathing life into the community. And they're right. all about the community, which is great. And uh, 
I, I wish them the best of success. I mean, this, this, oh, for this sure. is super cool, and they're producing a great product. So uh, right now, you, the only way you can get it is if you go to the distillery. Right. Well, as he mentions in the podcast, you can order it, make sure it's in stock. Yeah, and then online, you can come and pick it up. And then come, but you got to you got to make the drive. But our, like our friends in Australia, Charles and and uh, you know A R R O N A R O N from uh, <laughs> from from Ramp. You, 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 we're going to have to send you some bottles if you want some. That's Maybe. right. We'll call it olive oil and send it over wow. to overseas there. Anyways, uh, great interview. We're going to roll into this. And, yeah. Uh, it, it's just cool that we, you know, talking into a mic and doing this podcast thing, and I reached out to him, you know, a week and a half ago, and I'm just like, hey, we're going to be rolling through your area. We'd love to uh, interview you and check out your distillery. And he's like, hell yeah, come on in. And he ended up, uh, he did a podcast he, before, right? He used right? to do a podcast. Yeah, he's. I guess he's got a background in, in human resources. Yeah, so, so it was super cool. cool because we were like, oh, yeah, you know, this." Is re-. he goes, I know about podcasts. I used to do one. I'm like, okay, we're going to shut up now. Maybe you should interview us. <laughs> That's right. Maybe That's you right. should interview us. So uh, without further ado. Want me to roll it? Let's roll it. Boom. All right, Chris, we are here at a brand new distillery here in California up in the uh, Sierra foothills of uh, we're in Arnold California yeah absolutely and uh, we have the proprietor here and uh, master distiller Nate uh, with Hinter House welcome Nate Thanks. Yeah, I don't know if we could say master distiller. Maybe just <laughs> maybe just distiller slash uh, janitor slash logistics manager. Do it all. <laughs> NHR. Yeah, NHR as well. Yeah, whatever exactly. you need to do to pay the bills. Right? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so it's just uh, you and your wife. Yep. Um, that that opened up this distillery back in uh, November of 2020. Yeah. So right at the uh, the well, beyond the peak of COVID, I guess. Well, so rolling into the holidays. Yeah. Of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect wow. timing. Yeah, that was great timing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. I mean, we we uh, were too far down the path to pull out at yeah. that point. And um, had we not been, I don't know if we'd be here. Because the the world looked pretty scary, and if we had the ability to not do it, if you we would, hadn't already, uh, you know, pulled the trigger on some really big things, yeah. I don't know if we'd be here. And and so you know, the timing was fortuitous in a couple of ways. Okay, that's that's good. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today, as uh, you know, opening up a distillery in California. Sure, which is no small feat. Yeah, it might be a little bit of a, a weird story, but um, it, it really started with. Uh, uh, my brother and his family in Berlin. Uh, we went there for a vacation, and this was before he had a kid, so they were a lot more fun. Um, so we were, <laughs> you know, we were out on the town, um, walking around, doing some stuff, and we ran across a little wine shop, and popped in there. And while we were in there, I noticed a bottle of liqueur sitting kind of on a back shelf okay. uh, called KR23. Okay. And I, I got interested in it. We took it home. Uh, and between the four of us, we drank the whole bottle that night. Um, so we liked it. Um, okay. And then I got obsessed with trying to figure out how to make it. Uh, and one thing led to another. And it was a massive rabbit hole that I followed for a few years. Um, and now we own a distillery. <laughs> there so you go. That's okay, the, that's, that's awesome. the short version. There you yeah. go. Uh, yeah. In a, in a nutshell, right? Made it happen. Um, yeah. Well, this is, this is very cool. And uh, you gave us a quick tour prior to uh, recording here. And uh, you've got a, a unique still set up um, in a compact space, a, a hybrid still, you called it. So uh, walk us through that a little bit, because that, that's super versatile versatile super super sexy yeah sure it's um it, it's a definitely a beautiful piece it's designed by a company called cajun sons up in uh, calgary alberta um and they the guy there has done some amazing work um we actually were fortunate to pick this thing up used and again one oh, wow. of the things that covid did um that was bad for a lot of people was force them to sell equipment right um this piece of equipment was in baton rouge louisiana oh, wow. um and it was a professor from lsu who his dream was to start a distillery. Okay. Uh, he had he had done all the work several years back, including buying the equipment, had a, a spot chosen in, in historical Baton Rouge. Uh, and long story short, after he had the equipment, after he had the agreement of, of all the city officials and whatnot, they said they needed a public uh, hearing because it was a historical building and 
he ended up getting voted down. So he had this oh, thing in storage man. Um, and had given up kind of the dream, but it was sitting in boxes still, had never been opened up or anything like that. At the same time, COVID hits. Um, we're looking for equipment. We don't know what the lead times are going to be globally. Right. We don't know what's going on with uh, shipping and all those sorts right. of things. Um, and this thing popped up, and we were fortunate to to get it um, used slash new. So yeah, used but never or new. But, or yeah, used, it, it showed but up it, used. exactly. It showed up in the crates. Uh, no instructions, a bit <laughs> like putting together, you know, a Lego set without the instructions. Uh. Um, but, but we really lucked out and, and he was happy to have it, you know, get used finally. So, so yeah, I was wondering if he, uh, you invited him out yet. Has he, has he seen it? Obviously you probably sent him pictures and yeah, we've sent him pictures and stuff. And I know he's been following us. This is a, a unique unit as well because it was one of two that was made. Um, so it's, it's, it's a pretty custom design as most stills are. Uh Um, and for us, it's great because it's, it's flexible and allows us to do pretty much any spirit we want to do um to as high a quality as as my skills will let me which you know we're, we're getting there <laughs> Good, that's cool yeah <laughs> learning on the job that's right yeah it's a it's a passion and it's one of those things where um I, the reason i love it is i don't think you could ever learn everything not even close no so. no no i mean i mean i've been in my industry for 30 something years and yeah, every once in a while something new pops up, and I'm like, "Oh, that's a that's a different idea. I'll, I'll try it that way." And I'm sure it's the same with this. And you know, over the last couple of years that we've been doing this podcast, Jason and I, you know, we've had the opportunity to interview uh, several, uh, at least one master distiller and, and a couple of head distillers. And uh, I, I guarantee you, they'll say the same thing that that they never stop learning. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And spirits outlast us for sure. It depends on what you do with it. But, you know, there's there's barrels that are not tasted until after the person who distilled them is gone. So it's, um, you know, it's a it's a pretty interesting industry from that perspective. It's a little longer game, especially if you're in whiskey or brandy, uh, something aged, it's a little yeah. longer game than, than some of the other industries like beer and wine. Oh so. yeah. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. You've got a lot of investment that takes time that you're just sitting on that literally <laughs> yeah. sitting on and going, okay, Six hope years, this turns out 10 years, yeah. 12 years, 15 yeah. years. No, it's it's no. a little bit like burying your money and hoping it's there when you <laughs> right, take it out. <laughs> right. That's exactly it. Yeah. 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 No doubt. Um, so what brought you to Arnold? I, I know you, you mentioned that you're originally from Alaska, yeah, which is super cool. And then uh, you worked your way to Washington and, and uh, the Bay Area and now here. So um, w- talk about that journey. Sure. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, both my wife and I have had an interesting life sort of moving from, you know, the Seattle area down to the Bay Area, which we were happy to get into California, uh, mainly for the weather. Oh, yeah. uh, Can't the beat weather. the weather. Yeah. yeah. The weather's wonderful. And, and Seattle, uh, not so much. We, <laughs> we, we love living there, but the, the, the winters and the rain get to you after a little while. So we were excited for the opportunity. Um, I was fortunate to work at a couple great companies down in the Bay Area, Um, and then when our son went off to college, he was our only son. Uh, we started looking around and thinking, you know, we don't have to live here. We could choose somewhere else. And, and we didn't know where that would be. Um, through our travels in California, we found Big Tree State Park, which is just, you know, five minutes up the road from us at the distillery here. Um, and that was on one of our bucket lists. So we came and did some camping there, saw the amazing giant Sequoia and it kind of changes your perspective on the world. Um, stopped in Murphy's where all the wonderful wineries are just down the road, uh, rented an Airbnb and just kept coming back and eventually bought a cabin here. Um, and then when he went off to college, we said, you know, let's, let's just make the move there full time. I was able to work remotely. My wife, Bonnie was in the wine industry. So lots of wine industry oh, here yeah, in Calaveras. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, so we just made the move permanent and, um, and sort of left all the, the city stuff behind. And we were very interested in, uh, a couple things for me, I want to be closer to the outdoors and, and my wife as well. 
Uh, and obviously we're right on the doorstep of oh, amazing yeah. Yeah. outdoor stuff here, you know, great, whether it's the great recreation, yeah, here the sure. off-road trails, hiking, mountain biking, skiing, skiing whatever, right, yeah. um, all the lakes. It's, it's amazing. Frisbee golf. Yeah. Frisbee, frisbee golf. golf. Yeah. Up there at <laughs> got frisbee golf. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Whoops. There's basically everything here. So, so we wanted that and then we wanted a little slower pace and we, we love Arnold in itself when you live here, uh, it's very much the small town feel. So so yeah. you get to know everybody. Everybody's uh, got time for you. So, you know, one of the frustrations for some out-of-towners can be that it takes a while to get through the grocery checkout line. <laughs> what yeah. did you say at the, at the restaurant? I, I call it the pine cone factor. Yeah. So, even we, you know, we just ate uh, uh, lunch here at El Vaquero, the, uh, the Mexican restaurant, right? And yeah. normally Mexican food is like you order it and two minutes later yeah, yeah. You're, you're chowing yeah, down, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And so I'm like, okay. And so it was like you know, three times as long, which means yep. it took six minutes to get our food instead of two. <laughs> and then we're like, okay, waiting for the check. And it's, it's like, I told Chris, I said, it's a pine cone factor. I said, we're not in a hurry here. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, we're out of the Bay yep. area, which is nice. So yeah. you confirmed that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. People stop and talk and they get to know each other and, and nobody's in a rush. So, yeah. um, so it's really nice. That's definitely one of the, uh, one of the factors that moved us here full time. Okay, so that's cool. So uh, you were talking about, you know, your journey from Alaska to um, to Arnold here. And then, um, uh, so uh, how did you choose this building or did, you know, how did you, you land a location here? Because this is a pretty sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, we really lucked out. I mean, there is... Um there are not many places in this town, and I think probably many rural small towns, that you could do something like this because you have uh, power considerations, water considerations, things like you have to have a slab floor to be able to handle the weight. Um, so in Arnold, there were very few buildings that we could actually do this. Um, and we really lucked out with this space. Uh, the other thing is if anybody's been through Arnold, um, there's not a whole lot of parking. Um, oh, right. <laughs> so <laughs> especially on the busy weekends, you laugh if you've been up here Memorial oh, yeah. Day or 4th right, well, of July. We're or, using more than our fair share of parking right now. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this building has a, a fairly good parking lot, which is yeah, another great awesome thing. Lot, yeah. Yeah able to get my rig and trailer in yep if i had my trailer it would be in a little bit of trouble but <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um okay so that's great and then um talk about you know the origins of the name and this low you got some great packaging by the way uh, it's very striking eye-catching uh love the love the logo but um i know you were talking a little bit about the uh the German origin of, of the name, and, and I love it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the name, you know, when you're doing something like this, you go through a lot of great ideas that somebody has already had. Sure. <laughs> and right. so, you know, you're searching global wine brand names and beer brand names and everything else, and we came up with some really awesome ideas that uh, other people already had before us. Um, my wife came up with Hinterhaus, and uh, basically what it means is a small house in the back, or you could think of it like, a cabin out in the woods kind of a sure. thing. Um, we're up here sort of out of the beaten path and um, a lot of folks who visit here, they're visiting their cabins. Uh, so we felt like it was a, a fun play. And then also it kind of conjures up the Alps to me and oh, yeah. kind of Alpine territory. Sure. And we're uh, in the, you know, the Alpine of the Sierra. So um, we really wanted to go with that. And um, with the designs, we went with uh, sort of a diamond shape on the front, which is a little bit rare these days. Yeah. And we did that because looking at old sort of mid-century, which a lot of Arnold is mid-century, A-frames and stuff like uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. Looking at old mid-century bottles, uh, a lot of them had sort of diamond logos on them and stuff. So we wanted to play with that. And our designer, Justin Page, did an amazing job with the, the labels and then the interior of the back labels printed. So you get a different motif for each bottle. It's three-dimensional. It's super cool. It is yeah. cool. How, how, 
many uh, iterations before you you said, okay, yep, this is the one. You know, he's really awesome. So it only took a couple. That's awesome. Until, That's great. Yeah, we we really lucked out with him. Um, we probably have no business working with him. At all. <laughs> is he's, he local or? He's Sonora. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, not too far. So yeah. yeah, he's done some amazing stuff and continues to do amazing stuff. That's, so yeah, That's we're cool. stoked. And and one of the things opening up during a pandemic, um, when we you know, didn't know when people would be able to come inside, when they would be able to taste our spirits as we really invested time and thought into the packaging and give people a reason to buy it other than, you know, it's local and supporting local and some of those things, but give them a reason that they want to buy it without being able to taste it. Right. Um, It's like a work of art. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's great. And you know, packaging is half the battle, right? That eye catching, you know, thing, especially, I mean, how fortuitous with, uh, yeah, not being able to taste when you first open and people just walk up and go, okay, it looks cool. You know, let me, let me give it a shot. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and honestly, I don't know if you guys, so we've got the vodka in front of us. I don't know if you, yeah, let's, uh, I've already partaken a little bit because oh, I was waiting here. I right on. <laughs> wait any longer. I have but, a little, but little we do. Smart. So just a little bit about what we do. We do our, um, all of our clear base spirits. So meaning vodka, gin, liqueurs, stuff like that are wine based. So we start with actual finished wine and then we distill it, which in Northern California, there's tons of wine to be had. Yes. Um, and so we feel like we're sort of doing our part to sustain, uh, a piece of the wine industry. And, uh, there's a lot of grapes around and it just speaks to our terroir and where we are. Um, when you distill, wine it gives a nice uh almost sweet taste not overly sweet yes mm yeah i love it it's super smooth that vodka is like it is that's great i love vodka martinis and uh that would make a killer martini because uh vermouth uh to me i just wave it over the glass i don't even put it inside (laughs) so i like it vodka straight up chill that that would be wonderful yeah a lot of people are enjoying it that way you still it retains uh some of the mouth feel of wine so you know it's got a nice mouth feel great finish yeah yeah a little bit maybe touch of vanilla kind of character Mm -hmm. to it that comes from wine as well um so when we discovered um uh, wine-based vodka. We fell in love with it, and we knew that's the type of vodka we had to do. Um, so that's that's what we do there. I don't know if I've ever had fun. wine-based vodka. I, I, mean, I know I've not had it, and I, you I know, really I, like the flavor. Of I don't it. like Chopin, like potato-based vodka. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't like that. Um, I you know I always associated if you distill wine, it turns into brandy, which is true. But yep. I didn't know you could go you go a step further, right? And then it turns into vodka. Is that exactly? So essentially, it's it's splitting hairs a little bit. Um, in that with vodka, it has to come off of the still at 190 proof or higher to be vodka. Uh, that's 95 percent alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, with brandy, there's kind of the opposite rule. You're not allowed to distill it over 170 proof. Okay. Um, so what what happens there is you get a much more neutral palate on the vodka because right. you've distilled it to such a high proof and on the brandy and whiskeys and things like that you have much more character left in it uh, because you're not distilling it to such a high proof and then with brandy you're putting it in barrels Finishing it in a barrel yep. that's where the color comes from yeah exactly okay. yep right so yeah just different things a lot of people think maybe this is grappa but that's not the case okay. grappa is a different category it's it's made from a byproduct of wine not okay. actual wine itself interesting um, so there's just all these little splitting hairs sure. across the alcohol industry <laughs> that's great though man i i like that that's yeah. very good so yeah. in the process of doing this you, is it automated or do you have to pay super close attention to it i mean i don't see a whole lot of computer screens in there it looks like it's pretty no manual. there's there's nothing automated about it um what we're doing is super manual and super hands-on um and and that's that's fun you know for us i like to be engaged throughout the day and when we're doing like a vodka run it could be a 14 hour day right um so if it were all automated there's a chance i could fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> you know whereas with this um i i stay engaged i stay busy i stay um on top of it um, um, so yeah, it's all it's all uh, pretty manual and hands on, and that's where the kind of art and craft piece comes into it that sure. I really enjoy, along with some science. So it's a it's a lot of fun. Put cool. Your, put your twist on it, yeah. yeah. That's exactly. What, that's what I've learned with winemaking. You know, simple little home winemaking operation is just you know you can 
do a lot of different things. There's certain things that have to happen, but a lot of different things that you can do to, to add some nuances to the finished product. And yeah. That's exactly. where the art comes in. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is that if you are, I mean, I think automation is fine and I think automation is a good thing, especially at a certain scale. Um, but when you're a new craft distiller, I feel like if you're doing, at least for me, if I had an automated system, I don't know that I would get better over time. Right. You know, I would, mm-hmm. I would think I'm good and, um, I would set the automation to do that and the vodka would never change much. Right. Um, well, it might not have personality. Yeah, yeah exactly. Know, and, and we do, I mean, because it's batch distilled, just like most, um, you know, craft distillers, they change from batch to batch. Sure. And I think that's also part of the fun. Very, sure, very sure. much so. Well, my impression of this vodka is, uh, because this is, as we mentioned earlier, is this is my first wine-based one, and it's Mm -hmm. very flavorful. Um, Yeah. It's like you mentioned it earlier, you know, most vodkas are pretty neutral when they come out. This is, there's no, it's not neutral. There's, there's a lot of good stuff happening there and I like it. Yeah. It's got the character. Um, It's fun too, because it doesn't take much to, to make it drinkable, I guess I would say. So a lot of vodkas are there to be mixed and and that's fair um with this i feel like you know just some cubes of ice and sparkling water like a Lacroix is enough and it allows the vodka to come through yeah um right so on. it's it's a lot of fun you know a lot of a lot of distillers and a lot of people who think of distilled spirits think of vodka as a pretty simple and no-brainer thing neutral um yeah exactly not a lot to it and so that's why we like this we think it's different and fun and has character and and also again being made from wine that we're getting locally here it just adds a layer that's a lot of fun yeah yeah yeah. i don't know i don't know if my palate's just uh uh, but 40 percent. i mean this thing's super smooth i mean i'm not getting any any heat at all on this it's it's uh, a real well you got a more sensitive uh real (laughs) far on the tail but it's it is smooth. It's very good. Uh, yeah, and thank I'm, you. I know I'm going to be going home with a bottle of this. So. Thank you. And we know, you know, <laughs> hopefully case. the goal is over time it gets even better, right? Yeah. I mean, cool. that's that's the goal of all this stuff is to just continuous improvement. So how long have you been distilling prior to uh, here? About a couple of years okay. in total, learning about it and a little bit of hands-on and um, that sort of stuff. So, you know, completely new to it. You, you dove right in the deep end of the pool then. And, and like, yeah. Oh, yeah. in. I love no it. explosions or fires or singed hair. Thank God anything. nothing <laughs> yet. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. It's interesting. There's there's just so much to learn and so much to know. And, um, I like trial and error. And so it's, it's been, it's been great. And I can envision being engaged by it for a long time. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Especially so if you're, you're off to a great start, you've got yeah. passion, you like, you know, you love what you're doing and just going to continue on continuing yep. on. So talk about, uh, some of your other products that you got going on right now. <laughs> sure. So the, one of the main products we've got, I mean, right now we're still building out our portfolio. So we plan on having, you know, a range of core products that we should always have in stock. Um, if my production planning goes the way it's supposed to, (laughs) if I'm doing my job, in other words, right. Um, but we're going to have those main products and then we have just being small, we can do one off things, which is a lot of fun. Cool. Um, so a single barrel of something funky and put it out and see what people think. Um, one of our first main products is a bourbon. So this is a three year aged bourbon, um, who we worked with one of the nation's oldest and biggest distillers, um, in Indiana called MGP. You guys may or oh, yeah. may not be familiar <laughs> with MGP, yep. right? So we did, uh, one of their weeded bourbon mash bills, which is, is pretty amazing. They make good stuff and they are, uh, you talk about master distillers. I mean, they know what they're doing. Great mitts. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Oh. And so, um, you know, one of the ways, oh, one of the ways you get out, uh, with a brown spirit out of the gates is is by sourcing it, and then we do you know our own blending on the barrels, which is part of the process that I really love. Um, obviously, 
tasting barrels and blending them is not a bad Mm-mm. thing. No, I can't that's imagine that's a bad gig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a long day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody's, somebody's got to do, do it. Somebody's got to do it. Um, so then what we do, just to put our local spin on it, and again, to kind of have fun, is we take it from those fresh bourbon barrels after three years, and we finish it in local Calaveras County wine barrels. Okay, all right. Um, so it'll spend anywhere from six to eight weeks, not long. I've seen uh, folks do longer, um, but for us, it seems to extract really fast up here. Um, and the barrels we're getting are, are very saturated barrels. Mm. So, uh, the other fun aspect of it is each batch is a different winery and a different varietal of wine. So from batch to batch, they do change not only because we're small batches, three to five barrels in a batch, uh, and there's just variability, but also because those finishing barrels. So, um, you know, we've worked with a bunch of different wineries we've done, uh, so far we're, we're moving on on to batch five, but we've done a Cabernet Sauvignon finish. We did a port finish. We did a Barbera finish. Uh, this one is a Grenache finish. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so it's been, it's been a lot of fun. The other thing about it that's, that's kind of unique and interesting is just, we have access to so many amazing varieties of wine up here and we can get fresh barrels. I mean, these, these barrels are dumped while we're there and we drive them up here and fill them with bourbon while they're still wet. Yeah. Still wet. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and on, on this one, you'll get all that character of the wonderful bourbon and then the, the hit of the wine and the impact of the wine. Um, so, so it's a, it's a fun one. Mm. Great nose. That's, that's delicious. That's very good. I, you're definitely catching the uh, the oak, um, yeah, the wine. The uh, I like oh. the color. You go, Chris. The Look finish, at you. the caramel, a little bit of caramel in there. The finish yep. is is smooth with a touch of heat. Yeah, I yeah, like and it. we're I it, like it, it a lot. And we bottle. Thank you. And we bottle at 92 proof, which is you know not the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do that so you can get all that character and flavors and stuff. Um, the other thing we do, which has been a huge, uh, hit and, and people are loving it is we do single barrels. So, uh, sometimes when we're doing that tasting process, we'll find a barrel that's just exceptional the way it is. And we'll barrel that at, at cask strength, okay. just that single barrel. Right, right. Um, so they'll end up anywhere between 112 and 119 proof, um, about 200 bottles. Sure. Um, they've been going pretty quick. Um, and again, each batch is so unique because of the wine impact on it uh, that people are really enjoying tasting them side by side and making a flight out of oh, it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you got sure. a flight right there. And okay. then it's like, yeah. if you, it's kind of a, a Costco thing too, where if you like it, you better buy it now because it's not right. going to be there next week. No, that's yeah. what I was kind of going to say, because I mean, thinking about all these different uh, short runs or, or small batches, your library is going to grow <laughs> pretty fast. So yeah. uh, I imagine you do have some, a library. You're developing a library of your. History. We are. Yeah. It's pretty small at this point, but yeah, we try to put away um, anywhere from several to many cases of each batch, especially if we feel it's exceptional uh, and something that people will be interested in later on down the road. And we've got, um, there's, there's, thank goodness we've had a lot of interest and people have been supporting us. Um, so we figured out a way to, uh, try to have a little bit of fairness when we do come out with those single barrels. So right. we have a, a club uh, that people join and it gives them first dibs on some of those rare barrel stuff that we do, um, which has been really great and also allows me a group to talk to about what we're thinking of doing um, because I am, you know, as you guys know, uh, new to this industry. So is my wife, although she's been in the wine industry for years. Um, and so it's not really about what the distiller wants to do to me. It's more about what the people want us to do. Right. And, sure. and so we try to engage folks and, um, not be so arrogant that I have to distill right, everything. Right, this is my way or the highway. Right, stuff. exactly. No, it's good that you listen. And they're kind of like your investors, right? You're, you're. It's the Alpine Club, you call it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the Alpine yeah. Club. So yeah, that's great. Um, one of my buddies that has a winery, uh, a similar thing. The first 100 people he kind of in, included as his investors, you know, per se, and treated them with the yeah. you know, wine cost as his wine went up. The OG. Yeah. 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 The OG 100. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's cool. 
Exactly. God, yeah, that's really good. And so that was the Grenache um, wine that was in that barrel. Yep. Um, yeah, that's got a long finish on it. Now, it does. typically, um, when I, I, I enjoy my uh, whiskeys over a big old, you know, ice cube, I like yep. it on the cooler side and stuff, but, you know, and it opens it up, but I, I'm. I like that straight out of the bottle I'd right there. Curi- I'd be curious to know how much more open it would get. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It, it's, no, it's flavorful. It, it really is. For sure. And it, it does change when you add yeah. a little bit of water to it or add um, a, a, an ice cube or whatever. It it changes. And then, yeah, it's just it's been really fun for us to see um, the theory of, you know, would would a Cabernet barrel be that much different from a Grenache barrel? Um, you know, and it, and it's been, each batch has been unique. And the fun thing is, is people have their favorite Mm -hmm. and they're not all one batch, you know? So it'd be, it'd be fun to return here in a couple of years and do a, do a couple of years, a series. I mean, it'd be kind of fun to, to go through it. Yeah, for sure. Well, maybe for you, but some of us work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. But well, you're only a couple hours from work. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I was planning See? on driving up for the just this. I was going to drive up just for the show from work and then head back down. Wow, but my situation changed suddenly yesterday, and his wife left him. So, that's right. I'm, yeah. I'm <laughs> She doesn't listen to the show, <laughs> show, so she doesn't know. But <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was uh, you know life changes in an instant, right? But uh, uh, the very this is this is wonderful, and I, I man, you're going to make this difficult. I, I said Not I was only buy one buy or two it. bottles, and <laughs> I might, I might yeah. be buying them all. I don't yeah. know. Have room on your well, show. Well, choose wisely because California limits us to three bottles per person per day. Yeah, so yeah, there you go. I'll, yeah. come, I'll come back tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now the on the whiskey thing, so you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it and there's, you know, being sort of the blender forward, which we are in this case, to being the distiller forward, um, which we're doing with a lot of our whiskeys going forward. Um, so you know, what we're really passionate about is the single malt program. Sure. Um so we make American single malt and the fun thing is again, uh in the spirit of partnering and meeting people and bringing other businesses into what we're doing. Um, we're starting literally with the farmers, um, and the farmers in Northern California that are growing barley, which there's not very many. Um, then that barley is sent to a malt house in Alameda called Admiral Malting. Yeah. We, we, we know about that place. We do. Yeah. 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 So they do amazing work. They're doing traditional floor style malting, which, there's not many places in California, much less the country, that are doing that. Right. Um, so we're doing that. And then we have that barley shipped to uh, a local brewer and a local brewery. And they actually do the math mash with us. Um, so we're working with the head brewer there to choose the mash bill that he or she thinks would be a great spirit. Okay. And then we do the mash and then we transfer the, the wash up here and do the distillation and aging. So long story short, at the end of the day, when you get your bottle of Hinter House American Single Malt Whiskey, you'll be able to know who the farmer was that farmed it, where it was malted, who the brewer was, and what the mash bill was that they did it under, and then obviously that it was aged and blended and finished here um, and distilled. So it's it's as grain to glass as we can get without being on a farm, Um, and we're super stoked about that. Right on. Grain to glass. Glass, I like that. Farm to fork, farm to glass. fork, farm, yep. farm to plate. Yep. Yeah, no, this is awesome. Right. Yeah, and it's fun. I mean, a lot of folks don't know about where their whiskey comes from. Right? No, it's, it, it comes from the store. Right? Yeah, and where the grains are coming from, and um, more so in Scotland, it's a thing because all those Scottish distillers have been there forever, and the farms have grown up around the right. distillery. You can see the barley when you pull into the parking lot. Um, here, it's mostly factory farmed in the Midwest. Um, and there's some sketchy stuff they do, uh, right before harvesting that I won't get into, but, um, I I figure if you're going to distill something, um, it's good to know where it came from and and support as local as you can. So, and that, that's, that's really cool that you're doing that. Yeah. And I, do you know, are you unique in that fashion or are there others that are doing? No, there's for sure others. Yeah. There's, um, there's quite a number nationally that are true farm distilleries. So they own farms. There's one here, uh, called Corbin cash locally. Okay. Um, they do some amazing whiskeys and vodkas and they, they, it's a sweet potato farm. And then the regenerative crop in the off season is rye. 
Um, and so they figured out, let's use this rye to make whiskey. So they're making some amazing whiskeys. I um, love rye whiskey. Yeah, yeah. I've gravitated towards the rye whiskeys yeah. here this last yeah. Uh, year. And it's interesting because you get the you get the actual you know character of that farm. Mm. It's drastically different than the ryes you might get. At, at the grocery store, let's yeah. say. Interesting. Well, I'll have to look that one up too. I mean, that's because uh, you know, yeah. getting into the the uh, more organic type, uh, earthy, you know, flavored uh, spirits is definitely for sure. Place. Yeah, and then Admiral is also supplying uh, quite a number of distillers around California with grains that are locally harvested and all that good stuff. So I'm hoping that it's just you know part of the beginning of a movement and. You know, single malt whiskey, American single malt whiskey. If you go to the grocery store right now here in town, I don't think there's one on the shelf. Probably it's, not. It's no. crazy. I mean, anywhere you go, it's like you the shelves and in big stores, small stores. It's just like, what in the hell is going on here? And it's yeah. You know, you you go around the town, the neighborhood when recycle bins are being picked up, and you know, after, from a long week, you hear a lot of bottles breaking when they're getting dumped in the truck. But yeah, but That's yeah, in your neighborhood, there's there's a it's certainly a a big uh, resurgence and in demand and, and, and popularity of, of the brown liquor, for sure. Yeah, and I think distillers in our country, is, certainly the craft people have been on this longer than I've thought about having a craft distillery, but there's more than just bourbon and rye. You know, there's there's different things you can do um, with whiskeys, you know, like American single malt whiskey sure. or wheat whiskeys, or I've seen some other funky grains that people are using, quinoa whiskeys. Oh, no, wow. You know, really? That's a health food. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's healthy for you. Uh, Did yeah. you uh, visit some of these uh, craft distilleries before uh, taking this dive? Uh, yeah, I figured you had. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think part of it was just... Uh, being an aficionado and wanting to go drink uh, craft stuff. <laughs> kind of like us. Uh, yeah. yeah There's <laughs> worse things to be, that's for sure. Yeah. But then the other part is just looking behind the curtains and see how their operation was set up, pick the distiller's brain about what they would do differently, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy. Um, and the, the biggest thing um, that I've learned about this industry versus other industries I've been in or other industries I've witnessed or heard about is it's super collaborative. So there's there's no competition kind of feeling between distillers. And if one distiller walks into another distiller's tasting room, um, chances are they're going to invite you to the back. They're going to tell you everything that you want to know, answer any question yeah. that you have. There's no That's trade cool. secrets or anything. It's very... Uh, we're all in this together. It's still a very small industry on the craft side. Right. So one of the yeah. distillers I was thinking of that I visit was um, a Dry Diggings. Did yeah. You, yeah. So yeah. I you I've, I've been your, there. Yeah. So they yeah. use the, the grains from Alameda and stuff. Yep. Yeah. So I, I was, as you were talking about this, I'm like, this is very... You know, dry diggings esque, um, and this cool little yeah. So I distillery as well. So I didn't go into it, but they're really one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that we were able to achieve this. So I was going to say they fought, yeah, the California Craft uh, yeah. Distillers Guild, right? Um, yeah. That they're they're part of, yeah. So absolutely, right. and and um, also uh, they're the closest distillery to us. Okay. So when I, you know, sort of did the Google Maps, where's the closest yeah. distillery? They were it. <laughs> wow. And I, I literally showed up at a gin making class one evening um, and talked the head distiller, uh, Casey, into letting me come in and sweep the floors or whatever um, and spent some time there. And they've been nothing but helpful Good. in getting us up off the ground again. Sort of to that, you know, there's no competition. We're all in this together, kind of a spirit. They're they're awesome folks over there. Much yeah. like Ultra Four, Chris. Exactly. Ultra Four Racing. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it's just what's your the secret sauce? I mean, everybody doesn't appear to just be transparent about what their secret sauce is or what their. There's none of that. It's just here. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we have, so the next one we'll taste is one of our liqueurs, which really kind of started the whole thing. Um, it's got 23 herbs and botanicals in it mm. and they're all sitting out in the tasting room. Mm. So, I mean, you know, it's not like, uh, if you go into Jagermeister, good luck finding <laughs> what they put in Jagermeister that they, they don't want you to know. Mm. Um, 
you know, not because there's anything bad in there necessarily. No, I mean, it doesn't taste good but, in there though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a whole, a whole lot of pain. If you drink too much, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. So this is, there's a lot of different versions of something like this. Um, it's called a Kreutzer liqueur, which is a German traditional, uh, herbal liqueur. And, you know, these are, these are, there's different versions of this all throughout sort of Eastern Europe and the Alps and Italy and it's, yeah, after dinner. Uh, yeah. Cause we yeah. I was fortunate enough to go to Europe and, and they're, they're big on their schnapps and everything after dinner. Oof. I mean, just all kinds of different flavors. Um, wow. This is, uh, this is good though. It's got a, uh, it's like Christmas in a glass. Yeah, could be. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, when we discovered this, uh, this category and I got kind of obsessed with it, it took a couple of years to come up with a recipe that we now feel is decent. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, taking 23 herbs and botanicals and figuring out what's doing what and, and playing with it has been really cool. Figuring out the ratios. And yeah, <laughs> exactly. And the other thing we wanted to do is, you know, being Alpine, liqueurs, schnapps, you know, all that stuff is very traditional throughout Europe and the Alpine regions. Um, and when Americans, most Americans think of schnapps, unless they've experienced it overseas, they think of the De Kuiper bottom barrel, yeah, yeah, you know, 60% schnapps. the fire corn syrup. Yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. The peppermint schnapps. And yeah, yeah I, I got really drunk on that in high school and I've never had it since. <laughs> That's all it takes. Right. <laughs> so, so we wanted to kind of, you know, play with that. Um, it, it does definitely those types of liqueurs and, and schnapps and stuff have a place, especially in an Alpine region like oh, this. Sure. Um, and so what we do is, is we do it as traditionally as we can, um, but also we try to play with the flavors to make it so that it's not, for instance, in the case of this, overly bitter, um, which can be offensive to some American palates. Um, and so we try to back off from that. And then also uh, liqueurs and stuff like that need to be uh, sweetened per the law. They have to be sweetened to a certain percentage. And so we do the floor of sweetener, um, just trying to get just enough sweetener in there to make it technically a liqueur it's and it's yeah. bittersweet i mean it is really you get the bitter yeah. action there but that that it is a nice um subtle sweetness yeah absolutely uh, and it's, a it's long not over, finish it's not overpowering but catching a lot of juniper i mean yep. it's just yep. like and i like that i like the the scent of it and the, the flavor of it. It's, it's, yeah, it's that's, good. That's, yeah. Uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's a nice... Um, folks have been using it in really creative ways, too. That's one of the amazing things about putting something out in the world, whatever it is. It's just what people do with it. I, I feel like yeah. this could cure COVID right here. Yeah, I think it's might, like, might it feels good after drinking this. Potentially, it's, it's 88 proof, which See? is pretty high for a liqueur, too. <laughs> I knew I feel cured, but, but I would also try to make ice cream with this. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. had a couple of folks who made um, kind of like a syrup to pour over oh, yeah. ice cream oh, out of it. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. We've had some people do some really creative stuff using it in replacement in bitters in cocktail recipes. I can see really? that. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I can yeah. see that with a little... Yeah. yeah. The other fun thing, and this is probably sacrilege to somebody who's... To anybody who's a real whiskey Purist. connoisseur, but uh, whiskey on the rocks with a, just a little bit of splash of this adds some interesting spices and stuff to your well, whiskey. Okay, that's like a mixed, I mean, what do you do when you make a Manhattan or something? You're adding bitters to it, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, and, and vermouth, yeah. mm -hmm. sweet yeah. vermouth for, for a Manhattan. So why, why would that? It's just hey. another mixed drink with, yeah. that, with a different flavor profile. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's great. That's uh, awesome. That's, that's totally unique. Interesting there. Now, is that going to, that, Spirit is that going to be? Uh, it's going to evolve. It's not. It can, it's not going to be consistently the same generation after generation. Yeah, that's a great question, and the answer is yes. It's going to. It's going to evolve over time, and primarily because we also age it in oak barrels. Okay. Um, and what we're doing with that is a Solera aging. So I don't know if you've you've heard of this, but Solera yeah. is a concept of taking multiple barrels of something. Um, and over time, marrying them together. So essentially, when you harvest a bottle, you're going to take from the oldest barrel, 
part of it, and then you're going to transfer a little bits forward in the oh, process. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, and it's used overseas in brandy production a lot, and there's some Soleras in the world that are over 100 years old. Ooh. So they've been doing this, and the theory is is that some of the spirit, the oldest spirit, is kind of always in the system. Sure. So the flavor gets more complex. Um, it gets older over time, theoretically. Interesting. Yeah. yeah that makes that sense. Is, that is cool, and I'd, I'd like to yeah. know, learn more about it's that. almost like the mother, yeah. you know, exactly. Like a, a yeast uh, uh, sourdough starter or something. Sourdough right? starter, right? Yeah, yeah. but but with, yeah. with with whiskey and bourbon. So I'm confident just because of that that it will change over time. I don't know how, <laughs> um, but that'll be fun to see. Absolutely, right. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Very cool. That's uh, wow. That's a great great lineup there, Nate. Um, so what is your what is your favorite um, right now that you got got for sale? What's, uh, oh man, I think probably the gin that we have coming out mm-hmm. in the next week or so is um, is one of my favorites. We're making it with all botanicals that are native to the Sierra Nevada. Okay, um, so that's fun. Um, it's not uh, you know we aren't able to source everything from the Sierra Nevada, but they're all plants that that grow here. So that's that's kind of a fun one and a little bit different because you can't have things like coriander that are fairly common in gin. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that one's a lot of fun. I, I like that one a lot. And then going forward, I'm really interested to see what people think of our beer snops that's going to come out. So I think we're talking yeah, about you, this you a little bit. That. So let's talk about this beer schnapps. This sounds crazy. Yeah. yeah. So basically we're saving old beer <laughs> from certain destruction. Okay. Um, and so what we do is we take beer uh, that's, that's actual finished beer. So it's got hops in it and whatever else is in their mash bill for a given beer. Okay. And we distill that. Okay. Um, when you do that, it's almost like a whiskey because it's mostly grains. You know, you've got wheat in there, barley, depending on the mash, whatever they've got in there. Uh, and we age it in oak barrels, just like whiskey, except it has hops. So you can't call it whiskey because hop is not a grain. Correct. Um, so beer schnapps is what it is. And that's a traditional sort of thing that happens after Oktoberfest in Germany. Uh-huh. They'll take all the old beer that didn't sell and distill it. And, yeah. and make this beer schnapps out of, of that it. before. Neither have I. Yeah, yeah. So it's a trip because the hops absolutely come through. Um, so you'll taste and smell hops on the nose of it. Okay. Um, and when you drink it, it's almost like a whiskey up front. And then your aftertaste in your mouth is like you've had a sip of an IPA. So it's a trip. It's, a trip. it's like the best of, both worlds. The world. it's yeah. best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some people absolutely love it. And some people are like, my head's going to explode. I don't know what I'm drinking here. <laughs> it, you know, it's um, intriguing. So, I would yeah. I'd try it. I'm not yeah. a big IPA fan, but I'm a whiskey fan. Yeah. And same thing, partnerships, right? So uh, we partner with wineries on all the wine stuff. We uh, talked about the brewery partnerships. The other brewery partnership we have is on beer schnapps. So, cool. um, you know, one of them is Dying Breed in Oakdale, which makes some amazing mm. beers. Heard of them. Um, and they uh, passed on some Oktoberfest beer to us because this last Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest was beer. a bust. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there weren't very big parties and no. all this sort of stuff. So we just it into beer schnapps put it in barrels this Oktoberfest, they're going to release the same beer and we'll be releasing the beer schnapps at the same time oh, wow. so you'll be able to grab a bottle of beer schnapps go down and get a six pack of this beer and see if you can find the the lineage and wow. the relationship perfect that's cool yeah that is yeah. cool let's so be up here for that it's a lot of fun yeah right on so what's your uh what's what's one of your favorite go-to whiskeys or spirits that uh you don't produce that that's on your shelf at home? Oh man, I think one of my favorite kind of every day would be Knob Creek 100. Okay. Okay. Um that's a good choice. I, I just love Knob Creek. I like what they're doing. I like I like the flavor profile of it. Just fits me. Um from a craft perspective right now, it's definitely anything in the Balconis lineup. They're a Texas distiller, um, and they make some amazing stuff. Specifically, their single malt is amazing. Um, and you can get these online, or Total Wine usually okay. has them, okay. stuff like that. But uh, the Brimstone, I've just been loving. So it's a smoked uh, whiskey that's smoked with Texas oak. 
Ooh. and it tastes like eating barbecue burnt ends. I was going to say brisket. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Okay, 100%. you got my attention. Really? It's rich and dark and smoky in a, in a barbecue way, not in a... Uh, peat way. Okay, good, because see, yeah. that's one thing. I, I started out with scotches when I got into the whiskey, dove into the whiskey pool, and uh, I, I quickly learned I don't like super smoky, peaty, you know. Yeah. I like some, but man, you get into those lagaluvium, oh my gosh, it's just liquid campfire, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, so that's, the, I, I want to try that now. That that sounds... That's well, let's yeah. track it down. Yeah, yeah, intriguing. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I imagine, I haven't had barbecue since I've got this bottle, uh, but I imagine it would be just the perfect okay. pairing for yeah. like a steak just, on the barbecue. Just yeah. barbecue every night. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's nice. They do amazing stuff. Uh, right they on. do really good stuff. That's cool. well, we'll track that down and add it to the Wheeling Wine and Whiskey uh, collection. There for you sure. Go. There you go. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's cool. Uh, one thing I, I wanted to mention was uh, this boiler of yours. How many BTU did you say that thing's cranking out? Yeah, 860,000. 860,000 BTU, Chris. That's almost one million. <laughs> a little, yeah. bit, little bit more than your water heater at home. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, had, but, I had a pool, pool heater at one of our houses I rented that was... Like two hundred and fifty thousand BTUs, but that's still nothing. Compared I to like, that. Uh, and you said this current still uses about what one twenty one thirty. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yep. So, so with the intention that you're going to grow this operation, and that that's very yeah. cool. You're you're like, okay, buy once, cry once. With uh, this, gives me room to expand. Yeah. Um. So that's that's very cool. Man, I, I love what you're doing here, Nate, and uh, it, it's it's got a great vibe when you walk into the, oh, the yeah. tasting room there. Um, you got some cool swag out there, and then, uh, uh, of course, uh, a cool little chill area. You got, uh, what are they, two-inch thick windows, you said? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the fire windows. So you had, uh, you know, part of, you know, all those things. I mean, I can't imagine how many, uh, especially being in California, all the 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 rings that you had to jump through to actually open the doors to the public but uh one of them is you you had to separate the distilling process from the public um there safely and it, it basically bulletproof glass you got there but you and your wife decided hey I, I want i want to be able for people to see this yeah which is great which is always nice when you walk into a, a distillery or or you know brewery or something and you get to peek into the you know behind the curtain a little exactly bit. Yeah. The wineries that do the same thing it yeah it's fun it so. forces us to keep it clean too yeah right. there you go that's true that's <laughs> right, true right. yeah right. yeah and yeah i mean we're we're hopeful that this place i mean this this town is such a, a gathering spot for people on adventures and oh, so yeah. we're hoping that this spot is just one more place they can come to meet up to to gather to have a good time to you know sort of take a load off after a day of playing whatever that means for them so you know that's our hope here is just to add to the community in that way yeah and that's great because uh you know years ago i mean arnold was hopping and bear valley and stuff and then it, it, there was a downturn and yep. you know you saw a lot of vacancy uh, of businesses that were sure. gone when we drive up here you know i'd come up here at least a few times a year uh winter and summer and so it's nice uh this is this is hopefully going to help drive some some tourism and, yeah. and some um you know dollars spent up here in in, in arnold absolutely yeah. well let yeah. us help to spread the word where what's your yeah address uh phone number instagram you want to throw sure. out the contact information so so we're at 925 highway 4 okay pretty simple address uh, in arnold and um, basically across from the Chevron station, just past the Chevron station on the right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. The sports store has been here forever on the corner too, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is a perfect sporting combo. You yeah, know, go and get your sporting goods stuff. Yeah, Come over, grab, have grab some bourbon. Bottle. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. There's a there's a cigar shop next door, so that works out too. You get an um, all one stop shop. You can pick up burritos. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you got your sporting goods. You got your cigars, and then you get your your, your good liquor. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And then yeah, we're certainly on Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, just uh, at Hinter House Distilling, and that's H I N T E R H A U S. Yes, the so German spelling. Kind of German spelling. Perfect. And then Pulse. our website's the same, hinterhousedistilling.com. Awesome. Right yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, wow. Well, uh, you're off to a great start. 
Um, yeah. Thanks for taking time. Anything else you want to talk about before we uh, we wrap no, it up? No, no. Just thank you guys for your interest and mm-hmm. coming you, out here thank and you for letting us come in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And for also coming to Arnold as you do and spending money at local businesses, whether absolutely. it's Mexican place or the grocery store or whatever right. it is. Or it's Hinter House. Yeah, it, it, Hinter House. <laughs> it all goes. The fun thing in small towns is it all goes directly to the people absolutely. who are working there, who own it, whatever it is. It's 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 a good thing. It's fun. We enjoy it. Absolutely, right. it's organic. Uh, you want to talk about about the the pallets behind you that just came in yeah yeah so canned cocktails are hot and we've got uh, our first canned cocktail that's going to be one of our first distributed products so in the next uh, day or two here certainly by the time this airs it'll be in local grocery stores and some other spots so uh, we called it the california buck and it's got our vodka Um, some custom made uh, ginger beer along with some spices. Oh, interesting! Um, so almost a Moscow Mule kind of yeah. kind of thing, and it'll be perfect for the sort of lake life and <laughs> hanging out, uh, you know, on the boats or on the trails or whatever it is. You can replace that with your rosé all day, Chris. Uh, my, yeah, my boxed rosé. Uh huh. <laughs> Wow, no, that's great. I, well, yeah, have to check that out. California yeah. Buck, I like the name. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And now, as far as your, your spirits go, is, is the only place to get them here at the tasting room right now, or is there distribution? Currently, the only spot to get them is here in the tasting room in person. You can order online, okay. um, but you have to pick up in the tasting room. Okay. Okay. So if somebody's coming up here on vacation and they're concerned whether a product will be here or not, just, just order it in advance okay. and pick it up okay. when you get here. Right on. And it also makes it really easy because our tasting room can get busy. Um, so if you don't want to wait, just order it online. It'll be ready for you. Pop in and pick it up. Oh, good call. Um, and then there's tastings that folks can do. Um, those are reservation only at this time, just okay. because of the way the world is and capacity and stuff like that. Um, and then people can do uh, a la carte tastings if you're just interested. Hey, I just want to know what the bourbon's about. Sure. Um, and I don't want to hang out and listen to you for half an hour tell me about <laughs> everything. Um, that's fine. And then we also do cocktails. So oh, on the oh. weekend, we have cocktail service and um and that's a lot of fun too so cool wow awesome yeah. right on man there's a lot going on hell yeah. yeah keeping us busy yeah well for sure for sure and especially just a small mom and pop operation your son's helping out uh yeah. so that, yeah. that's great a whole family operation here in uh, yeah. arnold california that's right um hinter house check it out uh check them out online hinterhouse.com and then of course the old gram that's right everybody hitting up that gram so uh, Nate, thanks again for uh, uh, welcoming us uh, to your operation. For and sure. and uh, man, what a what a fun fun afternoon! And, and uh, wish you best of luck, man. You're off to a great start. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for coming in. We really appreciate it. Cool. Right on. All right. Interview with Nate. There it is. Whoop. There it is. What'd yeah. you think? That was cool. And I enjoyed the tasting. I really did. It was cool. We were sitting in the. Uh, Behind the scenes, there, right behind the curtain, we were literally in the in the distillery. barrel room, the yeah, barrel room, right? We had barrels right next to us, <laughs> exactly. which was awesome, exactly. And uh, super cool. And uh, man, what a just! I love how it's a mom and pop operation during COVID, which you know I mentioned before was just crazy, right? And then you know, totally putting a twist on this thing, developing wine-based distillery oh hell yeah no i mean and that the flavor profile as we mentioned we talked about during the during the interview was unique i mean and it was it was super cool and then and then he's doing this beer thing you know uh distilling beer mind blown i never knew you could do that right so well, learning he's new things really every day. pushing the uh the envelope and it's not your traditional you know, let's go buy the recipe, the book, right? Like right. better homes and gardens, just like, okay, here's what you do. No, he's freaking taking the bull by the horns and, and making this happen, which is super cool. Yeah. Uh, the community's behind him. Sure. Which yeah, is great. Sure. And and people visiting in the area, I, I you need to go check this place out. Um, it's, it's just incredible. The the old sports store, sporting goods store, it's been there forever. You got El Vaccaro, uh, Mexican food restaurant where we had lunch at yeah, good prior food. to, mm-hmm. and they're right in the middle at the top of the hill. Great parking, plenty of room, and uh, if you're if you're heading up that way, you know, Slick Rock Trail is just up the road here. And Deer Valley's a little further on. Deer Valley, Hope Valley, you know, all that stuff. So, 
Um, Great it's, fishing. It's yeah, Alpine Lakes right there. You got Mosquito Lake. I mean, there's. It is the gateway. He's right at the gateway into the the playgrounds here. Playground. Yeah, and our playground. What a great stop prior to heading in, you know, to your vacation. So my hats go, off to you for making that happen. Yeah, that go cool. go go check them out. Hinter House Distillery. Look them up online. All that information was IG. In the, in the everything's area. there. Go check them out. I I I mean. Good, good stuff. We bought. We did. We bought. We were not sponsored by them or anything. Maybe we will be. I don't know. No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. But. No, but but it was cool. Um, it was just, it, I love having this podcast and being able to talk to people like that and just get their story and well, it's a different taste twist. their wares. Yeah. It's a, I mean, wine-based, really? That's a, that's a different yeah. twist for sure. So, so there cool. you go. So check them out. Hinter House, uh, Arnold, California. And uh, right on the highway four, yeah, can't miss it. It's right across the street from the bear, there it is. Boom, the bear at uh, Grizzly uh, Gas, exactly. And then, uh, Chevron, right Chevron's there. just down the street, about 100 yards, gas so at 495 a gallon. So, yeah, check them out. And uh, you know, don't forget about us, Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. You can check us out at wheelingwineandwhiskey.com. You can also ke- catch us on the Instagram at Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. At Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. You can also j- email Jason or I, Chris or Jason at wheelingwineandwhiskey.com. And then don't forget about our phone number because no. <laughs> even though Lorenzo's been found, yep, and that's great, but we 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 still want to get some phone calls in. Here yeah, hell yeah, there's some great talent out there. Apparently, feedback, good or bad, we want to hear it. What's that phone number, Chris? Do you remember four zero eight four zero eight eight hundred? Yep. 5169. You got it. Nice Ooh, job. That yeah. was good. Just printed on the wall on my there camper. You go. Nice. 408 800 5169. Give us a call. Leave us a message. And uh, we may play it online. That's here, right. Like we've you, done. You, I mean, may never, you, may, you may be famous. <laughs> I would love to have uh, some <laughs> other celebrities call in. I mean, oh, yeah. it's been epic. Maybe we could get. Uh, I don't know. Who? I don't know. Let me think. Who? You know that guy from the the, the the voice for Darth Vader? What was his? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're you're way beyond me right now. Uh, he's got that cool, dark, deep var- voice. He was in uh, Sandlot. Sandlot, yeah, I remember that movie. But you know the guy that had the house with the big dog that ate the balls. Yeah, I the Mastiff. Know. Can't remember that dude's name, but anyway, it'd be cool if he called in. Just saying. <laughs> Okay. We may have been yeah. had a couple of, couple of drinks. We're all good. <laughs> oh my god! You got anything all else? Right. I got nothing. All right, that was great. We're out. Yeah.